Hey everybody, this is Paul from Aerographical, and today we're looking at the heading indicator and how we animate it. So in PowerPoint, and um, we're gonna look at doing some animation. So first things first, all I've done is made a, a, a blank slide. Um, you can do that in your own presentation. And the first thing we need to do is insert our graphics. So I'm gonna go, go to insert, and I'm gonna put pictures, and you just need to navigate to where you've put the images on your PC. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the round background. I don't want the whole instrument. I just want the round background. So I'm going to select that one and insert. And you can see it inserts it into the center of the uh, of, of the presentation there. And I'm just going to insert the rest of them as well. So pictures, I'm going to go to the compass because I want that in there as well. Because all the images are exactly the same size and centered, you'll find they'll come in at the right position as well. So you don't have to position anything as you bring it into your PowerPoint presentation. Last but not least, we're gonna be looking at the aircraft as well. So insert that. So we've now got the full um, heading indicator within PowerPoint. And what we can do is if you want to, we can go like this, we can select everything. And if you want to resize it and position it around your PowerPoint, you can do okay as a complete image because you've selected all three of them now i just want to talk about selection for this instrument um, because it's three images laid on top of each other it's sometimes very difficult to select individual elements for example if i wanted to select the compass behind the aircraft i can't because the aircraft is sat on top of it now there's an easy way in powerpoint to be able to select objects and that's using the selection panel it's a it's not a lot of people know this in powerpoint but there's there is actually a layers palette which allows selections to be a lot easier so if we go to home and there's a button there called select we'll drop that down and we go selection pane and you can see now we've got all our elements listed on the selection pane so we can turn them off visibility wise and we can then select we can select them a lot easier as well what it does it gives them generic names which doesn't mean a lot so what i tend to do is i tend to rename them so that one there is the aircraft so i'm just going to put air uh, <laughs> That's not very good is it uh, and then that was the compass okay and the and then last but not least we've got the background as well so back so now we've given them meaningful names so now we know what we're trying to select and try to look at on the on the screen there so if I was to, wanting to select the compass and animate it all I need to do now is select the compass within the uh, within the um, the selection panel there and now when I grab that it will just grab the compass and not the aircraft on top of it I could also make the aircraft invisible as well if I need to to to, to make it a lot easier to work on so this is a very handy tip within PowerPoint if you've got complex images with different layers you can use the selection panel very easily so let's just turn the aircraft back on so what we're gonna do is very surely, very quickly and how we animate this easily. Now there's two different ways. The first way is we can use the morph uh, transitions between slides and this is available for people with um, Office 365 subscriptions and also PowerPoint 2016. This came in last year and it's an incredibly powerful tool for animating in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna very quickly show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna collect uh, sorry I'm going to click control D just to duplicate that slide a few times okay so I've, we've got the identical slide there and what I'm going to do is go transitions and I'm going to select morph okay on the on the last two so I don't need to do it on the first one so I can knock that one off so what I'm going to do on this one here is I'm going to go back to my selection pen select the compass and I'm just going to turn it round to there all right and then what I'll do on this one here again I'll select compass and I'm gonna just go around the other way like that now if I was to uh, select shift and F5 which will allow me to view the presentation from the current slide if I was to click through it now you can see we have an animation because it morphs the animation round to wherever you want it to go okay the only downside with morphing animation for stuff like this is you cannot control the speed but it is a very easy way of doing animation within PowerPoint okay the second way we can do it is just by using the traditional animation and this gives us a few more um, few more ways to animate and just allows us to control the speed 
So on the third, uh, on the fourth slide here, I'm just going to go to the animations panel and I'm going to go to the animations pane. So what I've got now is my selection pane open and my animation pane open. So I'm going to select the compass again because I want to move that one. And all I'm going to do is move that back round to north again to, to get it back to the beginning. With the compass um, layer selected, I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to give it a spin uh, animation. You can see that's come up there. A bit too fast and it's too far around for me. So what we can do is we can go to effect options. And what this does, it just gives us a lot of options to be able to... Uh, um, to control the speed, control the direction and how many uh, degrees the rotation is going to be. I generally always put a smooth end and smooth start on it because it just allows a bit of easing to allow the um, animation to look a bit more realistic. And what we can do is we can drop that down and we can select between the standard spins, counterclockwise, clockwise, and we can always put our custom uh, degrees in as well so what I'm going to do is just I'm just for, for this tutorial going to go uh, 100 degrees uh, um, clockwise and I'm going to go timing and I'm just going to set that to 5 to make it like that so if I go like that you can see now that will zip round 180 degrees which is pretty cool okay so that's a nice way of animating the background of the compass now if I was to wanting to put two or three animations on the same slide <coughs> I can just again select the compass, go to add animation, select another one, okay. So that's coming there. So for example, if I wanted it to, to rotate back 90 degrees, what I would do is go to effect options and I'd go counterclockwise this time and I'll go a quarter spin, all right. So again, if you want to, you could select a custom. Um, percentage there to get it directly onto a specific heading so have a play with it and and uh, see how you get on but I'm gonna just press OK there okay I forgot to change the time <laughs> so we've got timing there and I'm gonna, just gonna make that five seconds very slow okay so you'll see what now when I when I animate this so if I go shift f5 to view that specific slide one press it goes down to south okay and then the ne next button press it will go back to west okay so again you can then animate this in different ways and get it to go to different headings um, and it's pretty cool really so you can do a lot with this and it looks pretty good so as always any questions please let me know and i uh, hope you enjoy using the heading indicator and i look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much.